We're in the heart of Bristol, England, where all the cool people live. The part that is from my cameraman, Jack, there. No, but seriously, we're at the home of Starling Cycles. Uh, arguably one of the best steel full suspension mountain bike brands in the world. And guess what? We've actually got a carbon fiber concept e-mountain bike. We're gonna be taking a look at all the details here with Joe today. Uh, now I say the best uh, steel full suspension mountain bike company. I am probably a little bit biased. There are other ones in the world, but I have to say I did have some fantastic experiences on bikes such as the Swoop, as the Merba. Merba was 170, 29 inch wheels, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah, yeah, 29 er yeah. Yeah, oh, by the way, Joe is the owner Hello, and founder of Starling Bikes. And, uh, but Joe, we're talking carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, this, this will be will come as a surprise to many people out here. I mean, steel, steel's at your heart, isn't it? And didn't you say the carbon fiber, or am I misquoting you? Carbon fiber was shit. I, I, yeah. <laughs> We have talked about this in the past, and um, my, my background is in carbon fiber. I was, a, I was an aerospace engineer. I used to work in R&D, you know, research and development, developing carbon fiber stuff, so, yeah. for, for aeroplanes. So, I, I miss, okay, so basically, folks, I misquoted Joe. So, what Joe said was, is that carbon fiber in a lot, not all, of mountain bike manufacture isn't as good as what you find in the aerospace industry. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so I've seen carbon fiber at the highest level, I've looked at carbon fiber bikes and the quality's not there. It's, it's fit for purpose, so be careful. You know, they, they do the job, yeah. but the quality isn't the same as aerospace. So right, okay. it's as, not... as me as a manufacturer, yeah. to build something to a lower standard compared to what I've seen before right. wouldn't seem right. Yeah, but Joe, steel has been, has been the dream yeah. uh, and Starling has, has become a fantastic business for you. Yeah. You've now got your own workshop, you're not in the garden shed anymore. Yeah, no. uh, and I'm very happy to see that you've moved on to e-mountain bikes. We yeah. rode this, you know, we featured the steel bike, the, the, uh, the prototype steel bike of Joe's a few months ago, but now we've got this carbon fiber bike, 170 mil front and rear, uh, 29, 27.5. We've got the free flow technologies motor in here. Uh, I think the, the Battery capacity is kind of irrelevant. We'll come on to that a little bit later on. Uh, fantastic geometry. We've got a 445 chainstay, 63 head angle. And one of the things which has been great about Starling bikes over the years is the reach measurement. Now, you know, yeah. you, you can, well, actually, you can tailor any bike to, to yeah. any, any rider's needs, basically. But, Joe, the material, we're talking thermoplastic. Yeah. Right? Now, thermoplastic is different to the traditional um, thermoset, correct? Yeah, yeah. So we've now got, instead of uh, the matrix, I love that word, the matrix being epoxy, epoxy? Yeah, epoxy, right? whatever, Basically, yeah. Basically, normally you've got uh, strands of carbon fiber and you've got epoxy. This time you've got strands of carbon fiber yep. and nylon, right? Yep. Here's a bit yep. of nylon, folks, for you to see. So uh, basically we've got, um, that is the, it's not the bonding agent, is it? It's the matrix, you, so it holds the fibers together. It, if it was just fibers on its own, it would be like a bit of soft fabric and it would just move apart. So you have the you have the hard matrix to hold everything together. Keep it as a keep it as a lump. Yeah. Uh, and this is actually you've got this is made in the UK? Yeah, fully made in the UK, yeah, yeah. So we uh, it was actually a government funded project to try and develop a new manufacturing process uh, in partnership with a company called Composite Braiding, who made the tubes and National Composite Centre, which is a, uh, a research centre in Bristol, where I used to work, actually. Right, so that's, oh, wow. a, that's kind of so where it came from. So it's cool, then. We've, got, we've yeah. got the British made and designed R&D on, on the motor. Yeah, we've yeah. got the frame, we've got the geometry. I mean, yeah, it's great. Um, folks, I want to say one thing. Now, recently we had the Kelly's bike on the channel, which was a thermoplastic steel carbon composite, right? Yeah. So roughly the same. Yeah, similar. It's yeah. thermoplastic matrix. They yeah. they've added some steel maybe to the to the carbon fibre. Yeah, yeah sim similar idea. So the construction of this bike. Uh, tell me, can, you know, give me, tell me if I'm wrong here, Joe. We've got two uh, tubes. Actually, there's three. three we've tubes, got the down yeah. tube, the top tube, and the C tube yeah. there. And we've got some lugs here. Yeah. So those lugs are beautifully faded into the tubes there with a nice bit of uh, paintwork there, Joe. Yeah. Have to yeah. say, thermoplastic. Yep. What are the benefits of using this material? So there's, there's, there's lots of benefits really. Um, so first, damage tolerance. So what, one of the big issues with epoxy carbon fibers is as you whack it, the, the epoxy breaks. It's quite brittle, the epoxy, it breaks open. 
And because the epoxy is no longer there, you, you can reduce the strength of the carbon fibre quite a lot. You've just got the unsupported fibres. So whereas the nylon is a much more ductile material, it absorbs impacts. Like this is, this is tough. Yeah. Whereas if this was epoxy and you hit it with a hammer, it would just shatter. This, this will never so, shatter. So epoxy is kind of like aralide, right? Yeah, it's the same. same. Aralide is, is a type of epoxy, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Um, I'm guessing because you, you make these tubes, I guess there's a consistency to the tubing, right? Yeah, so part of... That's less to do with the thermoplastic, more to do with the manufacturing process of these tubes. These tubes are braided, so they're actually made on a, a rope-making machine. And it's like a, it's a continuous sleeve of fibres. So the fibres running from here to here are continuous. They're woven, but they're continuous. And then going around the diameter, there's no seam. So most frames are made... Yeah, so yeah. we've got a bit cheaper there. Most frames are made having a mould with one half and then a mould with a second half, and they put them together and then they sort of, yeah. with a bag, press it all. Yeah. And there's Stick a it seam. in the oven. Yeah, there's a seam top, top and bottom, or there's a seam at some point, which is a weak point. I guess the good thing with this is you can actually inspect the tubes. Yeah, so that's one of the, yeah, one of the key things. Because the construction of the lugs and the tubes, we can, assemble, we can inspect the tubes, we can inspect the lugs up front, so we can make sure they're all good before we assemble it into a bicycle. And to me, that's massive. Right, yeah. If you look at... Um, carbon fibre manufacturers at the moment. You've seen all the pictures of the big piles of frames going out. They're frames that haven't failed due to riders. They're frames that failed in manufacture. So it's scrappage in manufacture. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about scrappage. Now, um, now thermoplastic can be, it can be reused, it can be repurposed, yeah. right? Yeah, Whereas, not recycled. Not recycled. Recycled yeah. is a bad don't, word, don't misused. Get that, don't get yeah. that wrong. So uh, tell me if I'm right here, is that lots of um, thermoset, Carbon yeah. fiber can't cannot be recycled or re there's a lot of I there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of companies saying they can recycle epoxy. Yeah. You can't the epoxy basically once it's cured, you can't go back. It's so the best they can do is take the tube, chop it into small parts, and they use it in filler in lower grade carbon fiber. So it gets reused, but the quality's gone down, and then after that you can't use it again. This thermoset, potentially I could, if this frame came to the end of its life, I could cut a section out there, heat it up, and reform it into, say, a mudguard. Because the nylon can be heated up, it can be reformed into a different shape, and you'll right. keep the long fibres, you'll keep the properties. So talking about reforming then, I'm guessing that if you damage this, you can, you can actually fix it quite easy. Yeah, it's, yeah, we're sort of looking at the idea of being able to stick it back into the original tool, perhaps squirt a bit more uh, nylon in there perhaps put a little patch on it, but it should be readily repairable yeah. and repairable back to original strength. Yeah, that's cool. I guess that's yeah. one of the strengths of, I mean, let's not forget folks. I mean, you know, we're talking plastic bikes here. Sorry, Rizzo. Yeah, 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 it is. Plastic yeah, bikes. Yeah. I mean, I love steel bikes. That's yeah. the whole reason yeah. I love yeah. the Murmur bike. Steel yeah. is still, still such yeah. a great material, yeah. which also can be fixed as well, can't it? Yeah, I mean, it can. did it, what, what's, what's been your motivation to get involved in, you know, in your, in your good old material carbon fiber um, again? I think just the opportunity came up because there was this government funding, the opportunity came up to try and develop this manufacturing process. It is driven, in a weird way, there's a sort of an environmental drive that... Well, you live in Bristol, don't you? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're in St. Werbergs, which is the sort of hippie centre of Bristol as well. Yeah. But, um, and Jack, Jack doesn't live far from there either. No, no. But uh, <laughs> the energy to manufacture this, this uh, thermoplastic is a lot lower than epoxy. So this, you only need to heat it up to 200 degrees for 20 minutes just to melt it and then it cools down. The epoxy, you have to cure it for two hours and there's a lot of energy put into curing it. Yeah. The fact it's also repairable, it's much tougher, the frame should last longer. So it's not, what's, what's difficult is that steel bikes are a better environmental solution but people want to buy carbon fiber bikes. So yeah. as the world keeps selling carbon fiber bikes, we, it is better to have a better carbon yeah. fiber solution. And folks, I'm sure you'll agree, it is it is one of the most stunning looking E-Man bikes I've ever seen. It is so sleek, Joe. Obviously, the geometry, the geometry is part of it, the shape yeah. is part of it. Let's, let's talk about let's talk a couple of things. Um, first of all, what's this is a concept bike. Yeah. What, what are your plans with it? So we, this bike here isn't actually rideable. The, the manufacturing of the lugs didn't quite work. This bike has actually got just 3D printed plastic lugs. Um, we yeah. did have a frame with the carbon lugs, but just there was a, a bag failure. We had a few issues. So I'm 
working with another company, hopefully, um, try to find some partners to try and develop this lug te technology a bit further. Um, but the idea is to turn it into a manufacturing process mm -hmm. that we can then use to, to make bikes, yeah, hopefully fantastic. in the UK. Um, bit of detail about the motor, the free flow motor here. Uh, I think, it, did we say it's capable of up to 80 newton meters? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah. I think a lot of people, the great thing about this is that as battery technology improves, I mean, I, I know that within the next few weeks, we're likely to see uh, battery capacities in downtowns going up to around about a thousand watts. So, um, I mean, it's not even an issue, is it? It's not even worth discussing that. No. I mean, yeah. but, you know, you could fit, definitely fit a six to 700 watt hour battery yeah, yeah. in there currently, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and long. It's reasonably big diameter. It just slots in from the bottom. So. Yeah. Uh, Joe, one last thing. I have to say, I would be heartbroken if it was a full uh, thermoplastic bike. We have still got the beautiful steel swinging arm on this bike. I mean, look at the detail on there, folks. I mean, uh, let us know your thoughts. Are you, are you steel people or are you thermoplastic people? Uh, and also, a little uh, 3D printed mount there, Joe? Yeah, 3D printed stainless steel. Just, uh, yeah, just as a nice solution to, to fit the shock mount. Yeah. Uh, and um, also, one last thing, we need to talk about the jack shaft, don't we? Yeah. Actually, going to stop you there. Folks, we're going to do a feature on the latest developments of the Joe's steel bike uh, on a show in two weeks' time. In the meantime, Joe, thanks so much for inviting us down yeah, to the you. coolest city yes. in England, <laughs> yeah. where all the cool people live yeah. and the coolest bikes. I have to say, guys, let's know your thoughts. Joe, uh, can't wait to ride it. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully soon.